when the scripture says that a god-fearing person departs from evil it doesn't mean that you are trying to run to good because you can't even run to good on your own but it means you're running to god because evil does not oppose good but evil opposes god evil is saying don't align with god do not obey god do not accept god do not be obedient to God, do not be submissive to God. A God-fearing person does not run to what is good. How can you tell if someone is really God-fearing? Now, that is what I want to speak about in today's video. I am Uwem. If you would like to keep on watching this video, I encourage you to stay on and I believe you're going to get something from this video. I have eight points to share about signs to look at and know a god-fearing person as i was making up this list of the eight signs to look for a god-fearing person god told me don't look at other people don't think about other people you know look within are you really god-fearing so this is not just something i'm giving out for you to just listen and hear but it's something that i am imbibing to also check within myself am i really god-fearing now the reality is that all of us in our life want god-fearing people in the relationships that we have in dating in marriage and even in the transactions that we do the first point is a god-fearing person is not just a good person but a godly person there is a wide difference between a good person and a godly person the first part is that people can live moral lives and practice morality and have good mannerisms but that does not equate them being godly people it takes a godly person to become god fearing but someone that is just being moral can dress and act calm talk cool treat people nice know all the gestures to do as a kind and nice person but you cannot equate that to tell that this person is a God-fearing person. And this is a caveat that you need to understand and know that a God-fearing person is a good person. But a good person does not equate a God-fearing person. Now we have a, an example in the scriptures. This man came to Jesus, the rich young ruler. You've heard that before. And when he came to Jesus, he came as a man that is moral he has kept all the laws he came to him and said good master what good thing must i do to gain eternal life and jesus said why do you call me good like you know it's only god that is good so what makes you call me good and all he was looking for was what to do on his own like tell me what is good and what is evil and that is actually him being a moral person that makes me put him in a category as a good person jesus looked at him and loved him even though he did not submit to jesus that doesn't make him a bad person but it doesn't also make him a god fearing person so a god fearing person is someone that is godly that submits to god being god fearing is not just an outside job it is an inside out job which is it is a heart matter it is from the heart out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks it is because you've submitted to god from your heart then outside outwardly you live the life of kindness you live the life as a good person but then if you're focusing on all these you know aesthetics of being calm being good being nice so that people would see you oh this guy this woman this man is a god-fearing person but within you know that there's no root in it you're not really a god-fearing person so if you're looking out just know that if someone is just acting without a real fruit then that is not a god-fearing person number two a god-fearing person runs away from evil which is scripture says the fear of the lord makes someone to depart from evil in proverbs chapter 1 verse 7 the fear of the lord is the beginning of knowledge but fools despise wisdom and instruction you already know about this that when you fear god you are going to have this wisdom that comes from god that makes you shun evil 
that makes you run away from anything that does not honor God. Now, when I talk to people, I tell them that the number one gift that I feel like my mom, you know, being a mother helped me, which is the best gift that I've gotten from her, is the fear of God. Because there were some times that my mom would not be around, nobody would be around, and I have the opportunities to do bad, to sin, and do whatever I think I would like to do. But then there is this sense that nobody is here, but God is here. God is watching. God can see me. So because of this knowledge from the fear of God, yeah, I don't need to be taught that this is an evil thing, but I shun and depart from it because it's not just because my parents would be angry. It is the fact that it would not honor God. It doesn't show that I reverence God, I worship God the way I do. It makes me an hypocrite if I go to church and raise my hands and start worshiping God and they sing all the songs. But then within my heart and in my actions, it does not align. It means I'm a liar. So being God-fearing is to depart from evil. It is the fear of the Lord that gives you this holy wisdom to know innately and be convicted that I can't do this. I shouldn't do this. You know, who taught Joseph that sleeping with Potiphar's wife is an evil thing? Because he said, how can I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? It was a wicked thing, an evil thing. Who taught him? There was no law. There was no Bible. There was nobody that taught him. He was pursued out of his place and he was living in kind of like this free world that all these kind of things were happening. So he had like the opportunity but one thing was a trade about joseph and the lord was with him so there was this reverence of god the fear of god that he had that made him be aware of not falling for evil but departing from it such that he could have the boldness to run away from it not saying if i put everything together and see what i can get from this (laughs) <laughs> maybe i could stay like in today's society a lot of people because of the supposed good that they would get from whatever thing they are doing even though it's not god honoring because of what they will get from it they would do it and that shows that they are not god fearing because they are only going for what is benefiting them not what is honoring god let me talk about this because i need to point this out Evil does not oppose good. Evil does not oppose good. What do I mean here? It means that evil is not the opposite of good. At the Garden of Eden, the tree at that middle was the tree of what? The tree of good and evil. So it means that that tree consisted of good and evil. And it means evil and good can coexist in the same place. But evil and God cannot coexist in the same place. So evil does not oppose good, but evil opposes God. I hope that you get this because this is actually the caveat so that you get this second point that it's not about a God-fearing person departs from evil and runs to good. Departing from evil here, evil means This thing is opposing God. Because when the devil came tempting Eve and Adam, he said that, You know, God doesn't want you to know good and evil. Morality. Because you want to be moral, be separated from God. And that is what the fall brought. That we are trying to, you know, judge what is good and what is evil from our human, frail and and finite mind, small understanding. And we feel like we know what is really good and evil. Of course, morally, there are things we know, but in-depthly, based on the intent of the heart and everything, there are some things we do that are good, but then are evil because of the intentions that follow through. Now, to not digress from the point I'm trying to make here, you cannot run away from evil or depart from evil on your own because you are frail you and i are frail even paul also mentioned in romans chapter 7 that the good that i would desire to do i cannot do it but the evil i do not desire to do that is what i find myself being kind of choked being held hostage to 
So it means as humans, even though you would know good to do, you may not have the capacity to do it. So when the scripture says that a, the God-fearing person departs from evil, it doesn't mean that you are trying to run to good because you can't even run to good on your own, but it means you're running to God because evil does not oppose good, but evil opposes God. Evil is saying don't align with God, do not obey God, do not accept God, do not be obedient to God, do not be submissive to God, but just, you know what to do, just do what you want to do, just, you know, do what is in your mind, just do what your mind tells you. And that is the reality of today's society when evil is creeping in to and people are doing things that are against nature itself in genesis chapter 3 verse 6 so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise she took of its fruit and ate she also gave to her husband with her and he ate now this clearly makes the point that evil does not oppose good but it opposes god because eve immediately she saw oh this thing is good for food but then good for food does not equate this honors god or this is something that shows that god accepts this god has approved of this number three a god-fearing person runs to god now i've already explained this in this second point a god-fearing person does not run to what is good a God-fearing person runs to God because only God is good and only God can lead us and give us the ability and the capability to do what is good. On our own, we are frail, we are weak, we cannot do good on our own. So it takes the strength and the grace of God for us to be able to do good. Paul Apostle, when talking about the labor that he was able to do, he said, it is by the grace of God that I am who I am. And the grace that he gave to me was not in vain because I labored. Now, I did not labor of my own accord, of my own ability, but by the grace of God, I was able to labor because the grace of God strengthened me to do that. That is Paul's statement. And then, us to do good, for us to walk in purpose, for us to serve God, for us to be God-fearing, we have to run to god we have to be people that are seeking after god if you only run to good you will miss god because sometimes you could be offered something that is tempting but then not god approving god doesn't approve of it it's not acceptable to god but because it is good to you like the statement people say everybody has a price and then you're being offered a million naira and you're like nah that's so small for me i can't i can't fall for that and then you're being offered 100 million and you're like deny jesus or you know just a night just a one night stand you know this money and but for the devil to use this you know because this is my thought for someone to exchange that kind of value yeah in in the human like lane horizontally it's it's a valuable thing. Somebody says, I'm offering you 100 million just to sleep with you. And I'm like, what value are you getting from sleeping with me? Because for you to exchange this, it is not just something that you're just doing for fun. So for the devil to, you know, bring you this, to bring you this temptation to try to buy you with what is good for you, like he brought that to Jesus. You know, if you are the son of God, turn these stones to bread. You know, I'm going to offer you all the world. Just bow down to me. It was a simple thing like just put your head down, bow to me. But then the intrinsic value of it is much more than whatever he would have been able to offer. So the reality is that the devil will always bring deception if you are trying to run to good and forget that it's not about running to good, it's about running to God. And this is the idea which I'm going to read from these scriptures that is going to help you, that God is watching you. God's eyes are everywhere you are. David said, where can I hide from your presence? Even if I am in the belly of the earth, if I cover myself in the darkness, the darkness is as light to you, Psalm 139. Scriptures in Proverbs 5.21 says, For God sees everything you do, and his eyes are wide open as he observes every single habit you have. Again, in Proverbs 15 verse 3, it says, The Lord is watching everywhere, keeping his eye on both the evil and the good. 
Number four, the price for your every decision is the will of God. That is a God-fearing person. A God-fearing person is such a person that before I make any decision, is this the will of God? Will this honor God? Like I have to make this consideration. I have to reckon with myself. I have to come to a place of contemplation because scriptures and Proverbs says that a wise man ponders you think over your words. You think over your actions. It means before I make any action, before I make any decision, I'm like, let me take time. Let me think about this again. Let me not go in a hurry, in a hush, and make a decision that will dishonor God. That was why it would have been very easy for Christ to say, I know what I want. I don't want to go to the cross. So, Father, I'm not even going to ask if this is your will or not. I don't want to go. Just take this cup away. That's all. But he said, no, this is my desire. But not as I will, let your will be done. So it is a place that whenever you're coming to God, as a God-fearing person, you should be able to submit your desires to God and say, the price for my decision is the will of God. Before I decide on this relationship, God, is this your will for me? Before I decide to marry this person, God, is this your will for me? Do you want me to really do this? Before I go to have this contract or to accept and sign this contract, God, do you want me to really do this? If you don't want me to do it, definitely it will hurt me as a human, but then I'm going to bow to you because I reverence you, because I know you have my best interest at heart. And that is the only thing that will prove that you are a God-fearing person because you're measuring every of your decision with how much of this is God's will instead of how much of this will benefit me. Number five, a God-fearing person has integrity. Integrity is a core value for every God-fearing person. You can't really claim that you are a God-fearing person and then you have no integrity. You're just living your life the way you want. You're doing things the way you want and then you claim, I'm a God-fearing person. So to even know who a God-fearing person is, it is not about who has reputation. Because reputation can even be bought in today's society. People can do things and do nice things and then the the true person that they are is hidden. They are hiding. But then on the outside, they are getting good reputations because of how they treat people, because they know all these things. They are just manipulating people to get reputation. But as a God-fearing person, you are not bothered about reputation, but you are so much concerned about integrity and credibility with God. Because it's about that that makes you You are concerned about the state of your heart with God. You are concerned about the state of how honest are you? How transparent are you with God? It is this aspect of you saying, God, search me and know me. If there will be any evil way in me, take it away. Psalm 139 verse 23 and 24 says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Job chapter 1 verse 1 says, There once was a man named Job who lived in the land of Oz. He was blameless, a man of complete integrity. He feared God and stayed away from evil. Integrity clearly states that you are a God-fearing person. Job was a man of complete integrity. He feared God and stayed away from evil. These points have already been elaborated in the past points that I've made. It is for you to know my integrity is much more important to me than the reputation that I get from people. So it's about how honest is my life. Is what people are saying about me that are good. I mean, I'm not talking about the bad reputation, but this good reputation that people are giving you, that's calling you good names, is that really true of you? So that's worth to check about being God-fearing. Number six, a God-fearing person does not need a character police because you have the Holy Spirit living in you to convict you. Now, what do I mean by this? For you to find a God-fearing person, let me put it that way, it is not you're not looking for someone you'll be policing around to try to check, you know, to try and be checking their phones, to check in maybe in the relationship if they're telling the truth. A god fearing person has one thing, which is loyalty to God. This person is not just living just to, you know, impress people, but should live 
to be accountable to God. So a God-fearing person does not need to be policed, but one thing a God-fearing person needs to do is to seek accountability, intentionally seek accountability. Because, like I said, trying to follow God and walk this walk, you need to be accountable. So that you will not miss your way. You can have good intentions and want to do the right thing. But because of lack of accountability and people holding you accountable, you make a mistake and fall off. So a God-fearing person doesn't necessarily need to be policed. But then the person needs to be accountable. That is a God-fearing person. And which means if I am a God-fearing person... I need to be accountable. I need to find people that I am accountable to. I can't say that nobody can advise me. Nobody can talk to me. Nobody can tell me anything when I want to make a decision and make my decision the way I want. But I need to find people that I I am accountable to. In my group of friends, I need to be accountable to them. I need to be honest with them and tell them, this is what I'm struggling with in this season. Hold me accountable. Ask me about this. Now, why do you even need to get to this point? It's because you are loyal to God. Your loyalty is to one, to honor God because you fear him. You are loyal to him. You pay your allegiance to him, literally. Like you're not trying to just do things the way you want to do. So being a God-fearing person, the fear of God in you makes you loyal to God. It makes you want to obey him. It makes you want to do his bidding. It makes you want to align with him more and more. Proverbs chapter 8 verse 13 says, All who fear the Lord will hate evil. Therefore, I hate pride and arrogance, corruption and perverse speech. This talk about the aspect of as a God-fearing person. You don't need to be policed. You don't need a character police. Oh, why did you do this? Why did you do that? You don't need anybody to police you. When you see pride popping up in you, that is something to be held accountable for because God hates it and you should hate it because that's evil. Arrogance is evil. Being given to anger is evil. Oh, this is deeper than you thought it was. So corruption and being of perverse speech is evil. So being God-fearing would make you try to hold yourself accountable in these areas and say, I therefore hate pride i hate arrogance i hate perverse speech i hate corruption i hate evil because i love god in romans chapter 12 verse 17 and 21 it says do not repay anyone evil for evil be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good i will end it there that is self-explanatory number seven a god-fearing person is a honest and a truthful person The one thing that makes a God-fearing person stand out from every other person is they are honest. They'll always tell the truth. They'll always come up plain. They are not kind of having ulterior motives or, you know, they want to lie, just intentionally just want to lie and manipulate people. Because you love God and you have the spirit of truth in you. My question would be, how can you say you have the spirit of truth in you and you are a blunt liar? then you're not God-fearing. You don't have the Holy Spirit of God. Because you can't have this Holy Spirit of God in you and you keep on grieving Him. Because this act of lying and manipulation, Ephesians 4, 30, 29, 30 says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. And there are some acts you do which will grieve Him. And because you don't want to grieve Him, you would stay away from such acts to make sure you honor Him. Number eight as the last point a God-fearing person lives an obedient life to God. In Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13, it says, Here now is my final conclusion. Fear God and obey his commands, for this is everyone's duty. It is your obedience to God and you living an obedient life to God that truly shows that you are a God-fearing person because you're always listening to hear from God. And when God tells you stop, you stop. When he tells you go, you go. When he tells you do this, you do it. You don't necessarily have to question him, but you can talk with him. You can gain clarity in prayer, in place of prayer. And I believe and I hope that this video is a blessing to you. Let me know in the comment section what are the things, what are the signs, how can you know who a God-fearing person really is practically and how have this point hit you like what about this point has been true to you and your life let me know 
in the comments and i will chat with you down there i am uwem thank you once again for tuning into today's video god bless you stay safe bye